one of the few places where you can say things like, it smells like horseshit, but in a good way. <laughs> but I'm not mad at it. Happy Friday, everybody. Yes. You ready to taste some fun wines from all over the place? Actually, I didn't realize it until I was um, doing the order of the wines for tonight that like three of them are from the Middle East. So, um, Welcome to tonight's class. My name is Tawana, for those of y'all that don't know me. Um, I am a certified sommelier in WSET 2. Um, I also have a background in education, so I love the teaching side of things. So you can expect a test at the end, right, because I need to measure how good a teacher I am. Just kidding. There's no test. So you're doing pretty good so far. I, right. I got wine in the glass. Yes. Yes. That's your test for her. See, I, I couldn't do that in in public schools, so I left for wine schools. Right. So um, I love teaching, and this class is a lot of fun. So it's all about kind of obscure wine regions, places that it's harder to find wines from. Um, we're going to taste some grapes that you've probably never heard of. Definitely some I'd never heard of. Um, and the wines are all very interesting and fun, as well as learning about the different places. So what I would like from y'all, um, first I'm going to cover a couple of ground rules, actually, because if I don't do that now, I'm going to forget. So we are not ever going to rinse our glasses out with water between wines. Um, we will, um, at the end, actually, Amy, will you show them what we're going to do with our glass? So after it's empty... We're just going to turn it upside down on our napkins. These glasses are crystal, so if you rinse them with water, it resets the pH balance, and it's going to be harder to smell the wines. Thank you, Amy. Um, we are also um, not going to hold back on what we have to say. That's one of the big rules, right? I didn't make the wine, so if you don't like it or you smell or taste something wacky, it's fine to say it because it's not going to hurt my feelings. Also, if you're smelling it or tasting it, there's a very good chance someone else is. And by you saying it, it's going to make them more comfortable and feel more confident in saying their answer. So be confident. Be nice. We never make fun of anybody except occasionally. Um, but always in good spirits. And don't rinse your glasses with uh, water. There is some light cheese and charcuterie. Uh, if y'all want to get some of that before we get started, you're welcome to. No? Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we are going to go around. Everyone is going to introduce themselves. I want you to tell me what your name is. Whether or not this is your first class, whether it's your first wine class or first class at Vino Culture, both would be helpful. And then what is the most unique wine you've ever tasted or a region you've always been curious about? So we are going to start right here with you, sir. I love that. So everyone has some great stories. And uh, now we're going to taste some fun wine. So we are starting out with the Viognier from Uruguay. So um, Uruguay is located in South America. Um, so all the wines we're going to taste today, let me touch on this real quick, are in the wine belt. So all, pretty much all, there's obviously, especially with climate change, some variation. Um, most of the major wine regions are located between 30 and 50 degrees, both in the southern and northern hemisphere. So this is what we kind of refer to as the wine belt. Um, and so we're going to taste several wines from this area. We have a Canadian wine. We have Uruguay here. And then we have the Indian wine. Um, and when I get to the Indian map, you'll see they do have a wine region in southern India. Um, but we'll talk about how they're able to do that and why it's unique. But our wine is actually from the northern region. So we are in Uruguay. So Uruguay um, only has a few different wine regions. So they are just barely kind of into that wine belt, right? And they are right on the ocean there. So they get the Atlantic Ocean. So they get a lot of med or maritime climate, right? So it's really wet, it's really humid, they get a lot of rain. So when you talk about like organic varieties versus, or organic, organic farming versus traditional farming, this is not a good location for organic farming because they're so wet and so humid, right? So they have a lot of fungal disease, a lot of mildew, it's perfect for pests. They're not getting a whole lot of air coming up through there to really dry out the grape varieties. So they have to work really hard um, to grow grapes there. So it's if you're into the whole organic natural wine movement, this is really not the country for you. They do make delicious wines. This wine is farmed sustainably, but because of the region, they do have to use some pesticides and things like that. Um, so the one of the things they do to help combat um, 
the mildew is they do this, it's called, and I've got to read it, I apologize, liar trellising. And so what they're doing is instead of the traditional like trellis where they're just long and the, the multiple, is they're actually doing it on kind of a Y kind of thing here. You can see, and the reason they do that is to allow the air that does come through to kind of blow through and keep the grapes drier. And it also allows for a little bit more sunlight on the actual clusters. So in doing that, they're preventing having to use excess amounts of pesticides and herbicides and things like that. So that's one of the things they do in this region to make really great grapes. So um, they grow a lot of different grape varieties here. Um, one of the things they have is the Rio de la Plata, and it's a higher elevation, just barely higher elevation, flat land. So um, they can grow a little bit higher elevation, but by higher elevation there, we're only talking like 300 meters above sea level. It's definitely not super high. Um, they also um, are really new to the modern winemaking. Okay, they've been there, Grace has been there since like the 1850s but it wasn't really until this current generation that they are actually really making serious wine. Um, the first real wine winemaking uh, vineyard was in the 1990s. So we're talking just this, like when they say current generation, like my generation, current generation. Before that, they would grow grapes. They would ship them up to Mendoza, over to Brazil, into Argentina or Chile and kind of just sell their grapes. But when it comes to winemaking, we're just starting to see that really in Uruguay in the last 30 to 40 years. So um, they are really focusing a lot on uh, quality now and really dialing in what they can do in their terroir. So um, this wine specifically is grown on 10 to 20 year old vines. It goes through what's called a 25 day uh, cold or cryo maceration. So what that does is it keeps the grapes at like almost a frozen temperature so it doesn't start to ferment. And by doing that, they're getting more of the aromatics and more of the flavors out of the grape before the fermentation process starts. And then they're allowing it to go through about a 10 day fermentation process. And then they do an additional, it's called a post fermentation maceration where they allow it to hang out as well. And then they're going into bottle for about six to nine months before release. So this Viognier, I feel like has a lot of really bright acidity, um, which I didn't expect. I expect a lot more floral notes. So I look forward to hearing what you think about this okay. Viognier compared to what you've tasted. Okay. So for those of you, this is your first class. Um, there is, I see some of y'all found it, an aroma chart in your um, clipboard. So if you need help kind of picking out the aromatics and the flavors that you're tasting, um, please do so. I do encourage everyone to participate when we talk about the wines. And just remember, nothing you say is wrong. Even if you don't have the right words to say it, we're going to figure out what you mean. So we're actually going to start over here with Ellie. We're going to give uh, some of the first timers some time to look at their aroma chart. The first thing that jumped out uh, as far as the aroma is like lemon meringue. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was having trouble getting anything, but I think that warms up. It does almost have, like, it's got all that bright citrus, but almost like a hint of that, like, the creaminess yeah. to the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like the lemon meringue call. Yeah. Amy, what do you think? I got some, like, grassy notes with it. Yeah. Like, fresh cut grass or dry grass? More fresh. Fresh, green. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was thinking the same thing. I was really struggling to get anything scent-wise from the glass, but... I was thinking like lemon zest. That's what I was getting. Yeah. Nectarines, orange blossoms, white blossoms. I got lots of cool white peach, pear. There's a lot of like tree fruit, but there's also this like floral component to it. Um, and then on the body, I thought it was like a nice creamy, almost like, almost, you said how much oak was on it or not? No oak. So it's all stainless steel and there's no um, really time on the leaves either. Yeah. Which surprises me that it has that kind of that creamy kind of aspect. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if there's like malolactic. Yeah. Like so keeping it, letting it being warmer. Yeah. I I actually wondered about that as well. Here's the interesting thing I found with these obscure wine regions: they don't give as much information about their winemaking techniques. A lot of times they're just like traditional winemaking techniques were used. And that's it. So yeah. um, on some of the wines, I don't have quite as much information, but yeah, yeah. I, I, to try to like yeah. 
you know, what they were doing with the wine because it really yeah. was creaminess in the back end. Right. Like her so, lemon meringue call definitely makes me think there's malolactic fermentation. So does everyone know what malolactic fermentation is? No. Okay, so let me explain that because I want you to all understand the conversation. So malolactic fermentation or conversion, people use the words interchangeably, is the malic acid that's naturally in grapes, which is similar to the acid that's in like apples, is eaten by a healthy bacteria and it secretes lactic acid, which is like the acid that's in milk. And that's what gives you that buttery, creamy, sour cream kind of note in wines. Um, almost all red wines go through malolactic fermentation. White wines, it just depends on the style. But when you think about like Napa Chardonnays, the ones that are labeled butter, that's 100% what people call mallow or malolactic fermentation or conversion. Um, winemakers can control how much of that. So some will say like 20% mallow, 30%, whatever, just depending on the style they're going for. And this is the grape, 100% Viognier? Yes, or? it is 100% Viognier. Yes. So that's the other interesting thing. Um, and I'll talk about it more kind of as we go through. So in each country, right, there's wine laws and the wine laws determine, you know, what percentage of grapes um, ha it has to be to put that on the label. A lot of these obscure regions don't have strict rules. So according to the, the both the vendor and uh, the winemaking sheet, it is 100 percent Viognier. So, but because there's no real wine laws in place, yeah, but I, I, I believe it is 100% Viognier. Yeah, yeah. Brad? Uh, I get with the, a lot of citrus with lemon and lime and, and peach as well. Yeah, 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 I love the, uh, the stone fruit, the peach and nectarine calls. Yeah, at first I just got like a lot of plump on the nose and once it kind of blew off, I got yeah. more stone fruit and, and citrus. Yeah. Floral. Yeah. When you say funk, like what are you talking like petrol or plasticky yeah, or? I didn't have like a petrol, just kind of a, it was more of an earthy kind of thing. Okay. All right. Like a forest floor, mossy yeah, kind but, of. But, but not. Not the, you know, the, the strength that you get on a ray. Yeah. But still it was kind of like I had to kind of get past yeah. that because that's all I got at first. Okay. And then very, I, I put on here pucker up to me, it was like a acid. Sponge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it softens up at the end. It kind of gives me that creamy mouth feeling. Mm -hmm. like I got the coating of my mouth at the end. Yeah. Yeah. It's got some weight to it. Um, the acid on this to me was one of the most surprising things is Viognier isn't really yeah. a high it's acid great. I did so, like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Gwen. There's like a spice. Like a baking spice? A baking spice. Okay. Yes. Um, can't quite place it. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just feeling it. Okay. On the paste or in the nose? Stay on the nose. More. Because I get a little bit of like ginger on the palate that yeah. has some of that like spicy aspect yeah, to it, but okay. yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Toasted Taylor, yeah. oh, what'd you say? Toasted peeler. Like, 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 but it's not like yeasty. Not, yeah. The card, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 We'll figure it out. In a nice, like in a good way, like fresh musk. Yeah. Yeah, almost like a Lancome perfume. Yeah. I think, and then then you take a sip, and it's like a Granny Smith Jolly Rancher. You know what I mean? Like puckering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But can't almost candy like like very fruity candy. Kind right. Of. Yeah. 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 So when you said like the the musky, do you like and you? Related it to perfume, are you getting floral notes on no, it? No, okay. no, like straight, almost like a funky, like, hmm, but okay, musky. okay, not just yeah. pleasing, but different, right. right? So, I feel like wine is one of the few places where you can say things like, It smells like horseshit, but in a good way, but, it is. <laughs> but I'm not mad at it. No, because I don't find it just pleasing, but it's just, it was maybe, or it was earthy, but it. In, in like a good way, so I guess that's why I associate it with a perfume as opposed to something different. Yeah, so it's a little, yeah, I get, okay, I like that. Yeah, awesome. 
Rick? I'm trying to figure out. Okay. It's like yuzu, like that. Yeah. Citrus. Yeah. Um, that Japanese know, fruit, yeah, right? Yeah. Cinnamon, maybe like. Yeah. Like that. Um, but it's like really, it's familiar, but really Different. subtle. And yeah. Tough to, tough to pick up. Yeah. And then it's just acidic. It's really. Yeah. The really uh, the acid on this is yeah. is I can't get over it. Okay, so I would never guess it was the okay. Right. Right. Um, I almost I almost like perhaps it has a little petite men saying in it that strong grape that Virginia grows a lot of, right? Which I'm not crazy about unless it's super dry. But I have seen some a little like five percent petite men saying in in a Viognier, especially on bad weather years. But for me, I'm like maybe it's genetic. But I, I, I got that same. Like when you said it, I was thinking skunky, and then I was, I was prepared not to like this. But at the end, I do because I like high. I'm attracted to high acidic wines. So, um, and I'm not crazy about malolactic um, in a beignet. So I thought, uh, yeah, I would. I like it. I get more tropical after that nose that I and I do like musk, like men musk. Like the oil, mm -hmm. I, but I then got more tropical fruit, and I thought, hmm, that's why that petit man sang. But I like the long length. I like the high acidity. It's dry. It's it's got the you know more medium body. I like mm -hmm. that about it. So yeah, I was, I was surprised. Yeah, I love that. Jack, how about you? I've pretty much gone through life disproving the adage that there's never a wrong answer. <laughs> so, but but I, I do I kind of get a citrusy, almost grapefruit in some pear. Yeah. On the on the finish, just because I don't know it flattens out or, or, or something. Yeah. Like that. But I'm not very good at, at, at describing one. Well, by the end, you're going to be great. I can tell. Yeah, there's no wrong answer. We were tasting a white wine one day, and I was like, "Is that chocolate? You don't get chocolate on white wine." Yeah. I don't remember. That was the wrong answer. And then it's like, yeah. I was like, I taste chocolate. Yeah, yeah. So, but there's a reason, right? Your yeah. your brain is connecting it, it with something. Maybe it was more bitter, and I yeah. just connected it with the yeah. chocolate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, there's over 300 compounds that are can be found in grapes, right? That interact with each other to create different scents, right? So, and then you add into that the human aspect that our, our memories are connected to scent and what we smell, we're going to smell that compound and connect it to something that's from our memory. So your memory is going to be different than mine. So crazy Amy over here smelling chocolate, but oh, you're yeah, smelling I musk. Well, I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, I mean, and I, you know, I'm just teasing. I know, that's why we like you here. You fit right in. So the interesting thing about this wine for me is DNA has um, naturally monoterapines in them, which is an impact compound, which is commonly associated with floral notes. I didn't get any floral really in this wine. Did you? You said, see, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, I did worry. not. Well, and I'm not super sensitive to floral, but usually in Viognier, I pick it up really yeah. quick. But so. they balanced everything else. I yeah. didn't feel like this was a floral wine. Well, well, right. So to me, I found them, but I found them in a complimentary way. Yeah. In a dominant way. Which like it's right. not in, smacking you in the in face. A lot of Viognier, it's more dominant. Yeah. That's why I don't drink a lot of Viognier, because I don't like to feel like I'm drinking perfume. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. All right. So next we are going to Israel. So the grapes here are Hamdani and Jandali. They are native to Israel. Um, we are just outside of Bethlehem here. So this wine, um, if you take it home, I do encourage you to read the tag. Uh, there's a, a kind of a great story behind it, and I'll touch on it, but I'm not going to dig in quite as deep. Um, because we do have six wines to get through in six different countries. So this wine is actually made by a Catholic congregation in a in Israel. It helps um, disenfranchise youth in the area, but it's made technically in Palestine on the West Bank. Um, it, it, I mean, it's just kind of, and it's called Star of Bethlehem. So 
whatever you want to do with all those that information. Um, yeah, I mean it's, but it's like each piece is handled by a different thing, right? So it's I don't know, it's just kind of crazy. So Cremison is the name of the um, the vineyard here. They have been run by the. Um, I'm going to try and say it. Celestine Congregation. That's the Catholic congregation. It is on the tag if you want to look up the spelling. Um, for years and years, this isn't a new thing. Um, so, sorry, I can't pour and talk at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so, these grapes, they are blended 50 50. Um, they, because they're native, they you'll hardly ever find these on their own. Um, they're almost always blended together because one is very tropical and one is more citrusy. Um, one has higher acid and one tends to be a little bit more shy. And on their own, they can be a little abrasive um, with the winemaking technique. So by blending them, they're kind of getting um, a nice balanced version of the grapes. So Israel is located along the Mediterranean. So we are a um, Mediterranean climate here. It is warm. It is hot. Um, grapes obviously have been around here for thousands and thousands of years. Um, they do have volcanic soils. Most of the grapes are grown above 1,200 meters above sea level. Um, so up kind of in the mountains north. Um, so we are technically in the central mountains right here. Um, some of the uh, best wineries are located in Golan Heights. They also have this wine region down here called Negev. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong and I apologize. Um, that is a desert climate technically, but it's high elevation. So because it's higher elevation, it's cooler where they're growing the grapes. So they're able to make wine there. Um, there is actually, and I found this interesting, more non-kosher wineries in Israel than kosher wineries. And that to me was very surprising. Um, up until 1990, there were only 10 wineries um, in the country of Israel. Um, in the 1980s and was, is when we started to see the first modern day wineries kind of show up. And now there's over 200. So, yeah, so it grew exponentially. Um, there's a lot of great wine coming out of there. They take a lot of time and patience with their wine. And the fact that they're doing it um, under the conditions, they're doing it under with the constant bombing and um, back and forth. I mean, war, but not war, conflict. Like, I don't know what we're calling it. Um, is pretty amazing. And all 100% of the profits from this wine do go back to um, youth, not youth ministries. It's not a religious based, even though it's tied to religion, the people that are making it, it's just like giving them um, op opportunities for education and things like that. But it's so not tied to religion. Catholic? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, I mean, they have like three or four different re major religions there. There's, there's, I mean, there's four religions in um, Jerusalem. Yeah, four yeah. Uh, Armenian, being, the Armenian yeah. district being one of them. It's Christian, uh, Judaism. Yeah, there's Muslim. one later. Yeah. yeah, Lebanon has a bunch too, yeah. so. Um, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's pretty interesting. It was really, I really wanted, um, for this class, I wanted an Israeli wine. Uh, we tasted a few, uh, the reds were a little harder to get than the whites, but I really enjoyed this one. And the fact that it's native, uh, grapes makes it extra interesting. Yeah. So this wine, um, again, it's one of those, they didn't have a lot of information. They just said traditional fermentation in stainless steel. So I'm assuming it's uh, put in the vat, you know, crushed, pressed pretty quickly, stainless steel for probably 10 to 14 days, maybe up to 20, and then into bottle. So probably not a lot of mallow going on on this one. Um, so, but I am interested to hear your notes on this one because for me, writing the tags, and I don't know if it's because it was the two different grapes or what was going on, but it was it was like, oh, I get this. And I was like, but wait, I'm getting this. But you're not supposed to get these two things in the same wine. And it was 
very like super super complex wine. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I, I definitely like got a like appley, but almost like then apple skin. Like yeah, like it was almost like bitter tannic kind of yeah. Yeah. And there's like a real strong like lanolin type oily. Like, yes. I would have guessed that it was it was like a rowing white. Yeah. Like, one of those, but yeah, that was. All right, you are really, so let me tell you. So that's, um, whenever I was researching, I'd already written the, the tag, like my tasting notes, but I was researching something else about this wine. And y everything you just said was in the description oh, from this, this wine critic. The lanolin, the, the yeah. apple, the bitter, the, yeah, yeah. the roan. Yeah. yeah, all that. You should go start your own wine critic business. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to hop over here. Everything she said. Because <laughs> it was all right. No, you got to give your own note. Come on, well, Jack. That was a little, uh, I, I think a little flinty to me. Um, yeah. And some, some minerality uh, for sure. And some, uh, once it, I don't know why I'm getting pear out of this, but, uh, but a, a, a fruit that doesn't have a whole lot of flavor to it, which is the yeah. most there. Yeah. But I think flinty um, on, on my tongue or whatever. Yeah, I think I think that's I right. Like what it, she said way back yeah. <laughs> so there's the same like licking a rock doesn't yeah. stick into your tongue. It's like, you know what I mean? It dries it up. Yeah, yeah. so there are uh, some limestone soils here as well as some volcanic soils, um, but there is some limestone and that will a lot of times give you that kind of minerality kind of aspect. You can almost kind of feel it almost texturally. Um, and I think the pear is a good call. Like it's um like a green tart pear. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amy. Mm -mm. I literally wrote down apple before she said it. <laughs> you don't have any new note? What do you think about it? I, I like this one better than the last one. What do you like better about it? I think it? because it doesn't have the creaminess, I think mm -hmm. it's like a sharper light. Okay. Um, so I, I prefer this one over the last one. So yeah. I'm figuring out beside apple since she took my comments. What else I did? All right. Uh, Beth? Um, for me, it was kind of like like an orange, but like the orange peel, mm -hmm. um, like the pep part of yeah. the orange. And um, I I wouldn't I didn't think of the word lanolin, but I feel like I'm coating my teeth, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, or going like this, mm -hmm. like that. So I think I felt like it. Um, I don't dislike it, but I always say that's not a really good. That's not good. If you don't dislike that, people don't want to hear that. I, I I think it has, and for me, I'm a definite dry girl. It has a bit, I get a little bit more residual sugar in this okay. than the Viognier. All right. So I'm wondering if there's some, maybe that textural feeling is maybe leading, because there's right less than there. four grams per liter in this wine. Right there. Yeah. So it's definitely a dry yeah. wine. Okay. So... Yeah, so I'm wondering if it's yeah. that textural kind of component yeah, that's leading that's you down that there. residual sugar kind of road. Because yeah. I could see that. Like, it's me. kind of lingering a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I would drink it. But, <laughs> and, I, and it's my first time, so I love yeah. being introduced to new grapes. Yeah, this was a, this was a really fun fun wine to, to learn about and taste through. Mick, what do you think? Well, yeah, I've been struggling to figure out what I, what, what I know about this wine. Really. I think about the line. Yeah. Well, I think that's when I Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm getting a, more, maybe more floral notes on the scent. Okay. I think. Yeah. Um, but on the taste, uh, yeah, definitely the pear. I, I think pear is a good call. And there's like some, I, don't, I wouldn't say bitter, but almost like a smoky aftertaste. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's very interesting. It's smooth, a lot smoother than the last one, uh, which, is, which is nice. And everything you were saying about it. The Israeli ones is very interesting. The is the Negev, Negev Desert. That's that's so interesting that there's. Have you been there? I have. Okay. And it, it is so dry and yeah. barren. There's yeah. nothing there. And yeah, there's there's not a lot coming out of there. It's a newer so region, but because there there's this higher elevation down there yeah. um, section, that's where they're growing the grapes there. So, yeah, so yeah, it's um Israel was really fun to learn about. Really like tough terraforming, is it terraforming down there where they're like they're using like in the desert irrigation yeah so israel's yeah israel's known for all that yeah, yeah. but in the in the, in the desert, in the desert there, too yeah they're doing a lot of that stuff to bring out to make it, it 
wine capable, whereas yeah. it naturally wouldn't be. So it's like literally changed the landscape of what the desert is. Yeah. Which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. They do. Um, so one of the things that I read, I didn't dig too deep because I knew we wouldn't have time to really get too much into it with all the different countries we have to get through. Um, is yeah. that Israel's known for, for their um, irrigation techniques because it is so dry, even though it's um, on the ocean. So, yeah. 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 Israel really, really reminds me of like Southern California. Yeah. Same, same plan, same everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Over to you. Uh, so I wrote down, and this is I'm probably very suggestible. So when you said tropical and I was smelling it, it was like pineapple, boom, popped in right. It was yeah. right in my head. <laughs> and then uh, when I took a sip, um, it, I think it's just like the juxtaposition between like the acidity of the last one and this one. I was like, whoop, that's kind of boring. Yeah. Kind of um, so I wrote down that it tasted like dried pineapple because you know how it tastes like nothing yeah and it was, and maybe it's just because it was on the parallel and then the more that i sniffed it the more that i smelled it jasmine and nail polish was like kind of coming through yeah. a little bit and then um, <laughs> yeah. 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 i like it i like it yeah that's right yeah exactly and then uh on the the taste and i think like that mouthfeel just really reminds me of like this mexican fruit i had one time called kinks like yes dry, yes like astringent type yeah almost like a persimmon yeah we're yeah like, i didn't want to eat that i thought that was a pear it was a, <laughs> yeah <real trend. laughs> yeah so the the nail polish that you're smelling that's volatile acidity and you want some of that in your wine without that the wine would be sure. not not as good um but that's what some of that is so if if it's overwhelming just it's in in the future, if you get like too much of it, you can typically, it'll blow off a little bit, but you can kind of swirl and puff into the glass and it'll kind of push it out. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vince? So it's interesting you said Keynes because I put persimmon down. And I thought that the, um, I thought the nose had like a little bit of a spice to it. Like there was like a little bit, like I got the oil and I got, you know, it has like a little bit like a cinnamon or something underneath it all that I thought was kind of cool to, to look at. On the body, I found like a like a dried white flower. Like it was, it was there, but it was it was underneath everything. It was kind of like yeah. it was dried. Like we had left the flowers out too long, and now maybe that was complementary with the oily feeling. But I thought that was interesting. Yeah. So the floral note I got on it was like yellow flowers. Yeah. Like I just immediately went to like yellow, yeah. like dandelions, even. Yeah. yeah. I had a yellow apple. Yeah. Which is I think the most boring. <laughs> yes, that's true. It's the most boring apple. I'm telling you, picking the lineup for these wines was really hard because these two, the first two, interact so um, unexpectedly that it was hard to figure out the lineup, especially with the wines following it. So, <laughs> did the best I could. All right, Taylor. Well, I struggled to uh, find the nose. I really did. It so, like, I was really grasping for something and I picked up a like I you know after y'all said something I, I do smell some of the kind of like gravelly flinty mist to it I feeling on the nail polish but more on the um drinking it I've got anise oh like anise yeah clove, kind of you know when you put a clove in an orange mm -hmm. Christmas, yeah, I get that kind of where it lasts and you're like I didn't like that but I'm gonna try it again you know, yeah. that kind of like that's too much, but but it worked out somehow. Kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah, I like that call. That's good, Brad. Uh, the only thing I got on the nose of the way over said is like it had like a waxy, but it's plastic. That's what I got yeah. too. Like it was almost like pet, like pool toy. Yeah, exactly. New, yeah, yeah. Like low for noodle. <laughs> Not noodle. It was like a blow up toy. For sure. Yeah, this was like plasticky. Yeah. It's like an inner tube. Yeah, I thought the nose also was very muted. Not not as very expressive. Yeah. So I really swirled it. I would get a whiff of like an overripe peach. Yes. But then it would die. Like it yeah. would it's like, get a little bit and then it's gone. Gone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I um, had the peach and the nectarine on my notes as well, but you had to, you had to, you had to, you had to look for it. Right. Yeah, underneath the pineapple core, like right. when you're talking about the pineapple, but it's not like juicy. Mm -hmm. 
Like I put pineapple core as my note, like the, the middle of it. You know, I, I'm a nose on this one. The first thing it was tropical and I had you know, peach, pineapple, mandarin, nectarine. And that's, mm -hmm. I went right to that kind of fruit. That's what I got. Yeah, um, I, yeah, all that. And I think it's the two different grapes that you're getting. Yeah. You're getting the citrus and the apple and the tropical and the, the clove. And I mean, it's just, it's a really complex wine. Yeah, and all the, everything, agreed to be also on the taste and everything, but for me, you said smoother, but I was thinking that it was much softer than the first one. Yeah. And I think it's because of that super high study of the first one. This one following that was just like, oh, I could just sit there and sip this and watch a you know, lifetime movie. The other one is like, I'd have one glass and have to move on to something else. Yeah. Um, but I, and the other one kind of gave me, it was like a coat in my mouth. This one was more, I think someone said greater to me, but like more waxy on my cheeks. Like I felt that on my like cheeks coated. when I felt on my, inside my cheeks. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with all that. Do we like this wine? Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What would y'all pair this with? Ellie, you I want to dump? I just had an olive. And a it green olive? It, it changed it completely. It was really cool. I don't know. Like in a like good way yeah, or just? It was almost like I was tasting and smelling one of the grapes and then mm -hmm. that made me taste and smell the other grape. I can't the kid had its Jekyll and Hyde moment. Yeah, yeah, I, I was going to say, yeah, it makes sense because of the, the amount of olives that are in Israel. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It, it smoothed it out. Like, it was really cool. Yeah. So we are saving our third white wine for the very end of the tasting because we always save the best for last. <laughs> so we are going to Ontario, Canada here. So Canada, um, as we saw on that first map, is just barely into the wine belt. Um, however, in the last 30 years, seven of the 10 provinces actually have a wine region. There are no um, government control as far as uh, the country goes, as when we're talking about wine laws and what can be put in. Um, so there is a buyer beware kind of notice that we're going to talk about. Um, but some of the provinces, especially some of the ones that have been around longer and are more well known for their wine, Ontario being the top of those, um, they have come up with their own wine laws um, that they have in place. So one of the things, they have designated viticultural areas, um, which is very similar to what we have here in the United States, the AVAs, they have DVAs. Um, in Ontario, there are three DVAs that they have sectioned out. Um, the Niagara is one of them, and that's where this wine comes from, specifically the Niagara Escarpment. Um, and this is 100% Pinot Noir. So let me get to the map here. Okay, so these are um, the wine regions of Canada here but we are specifically here in Ontario. So we're right here in what's called the Niagara Falls um, Peninsula area. And it is surrounded by, you see you have Lake Erie here, you have Lake Ontario, and then it's not shown here on the map, but the, um, the Niagara River runs right there as well. So the important thing about that is that when you have large bodies of water near a um, growing region, it will provide both cooling and warming effect, right? So it just kind of balances out and moderates the temperatures. So a lot of times you have later bud break in this area because the waters are so cold, still later into uh, the spring season. So you get later bud break, um, but you also have a pretty long growing season because as we get into the fall seasons, the fact that the water's warmed up is keeping the grapes warmer longer. So even though their bud break is, is later than most places in the world, they're also harvesting later in the world because of that. So we have a lot of um, like warmer, cooler air or warmer, drier air coming off Lake Erie. The coldness from Lake Ontario makes it ideal for Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is a thin skinned grape, so it needs that cooler climate because it can blister and burn a lot faster. Um, so what I was saying about the wine laws. So because there are um, no wine laws. Here's the buyer beware. So on this bottle, I'm going to pass around this empty one. You're going to see on here it says VQA. So that's Vintners Quality Association. Um, 
if you see that on there, you know that it is what it says on the label. Um, if it doesn't have that on there, they could be sourcing their grapes from pretty much anywhere. So they don't have to put any Canadian grapes in there and they can sell it as Canadian. The especially interesting part about that is, is some producers that are producing the, the VQA wines are also producing bulk wine. Like they're, they're still bottling. So it could have the same label on there, but not be a Canadian. California. Yes. California. Yeah, yeah. California. They actually get a lot from like Spain and Portugal. Uh, they also get grapes from like the UK as well. So, um, yeah, so that was you really interesting. No. Well, just no. grapes in general. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's interesting to me because I always thought that Pinot Noir liked cool nights and warm, dry days. And I don't ever see it getting dry there. You know yeah, I mean, I mean but, but, yeah, but coming off of um, like Lake yeah. Erie, like you get that drying effect off of there. Really? Yeah. You would, I would think you'd get, get more, moisture. more moisture. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, you think about it like, um, you know, we were talking about California earlier. Um, you know, the more you get inland, well, depending on where you are in California, the more you get inland, the more humidity you get. Obviously, if you're down way south, it's your desert. But, um, and the closer you are to the ocean, you get that those drying influences. Just that, that breeze coming off the ocean kind of just dries everything out and breaks that humidity up. So I know it's not that in Virginia Beach, but yeah, no, I guess it's a lot like yeah. the Willamette Valley. Yes, there, yeah, you that, get that that drying that effect. Yeah, like yeah. So it's um, it's it's this area specifically is ideal for Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Riesling, right? We, you, you really you don't even know we have. We just planted 2,000 um, Pinot Noir wines, but not for a Pinot Noir varietal for a sparkling vineyard because oh, okay. we could harvest right. it at the beginning of September. But yeah. no, the skins are too thin, like you say, and yeah. our winds are going to slap it around our community. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think what's wild is like the lake effect that happens in the United States, obviously, isn't as drastic in Canada. Well, yeah, because the, the air is moving in a different direction. Right. So, the, right, know, so right. It is, it is pretty crazy to think about those. It is so yeah. drastically yeah. different. Yeah. Uh, and it's not that far away, like Toronto to the Yeah. Pretty close. Yes, I agree. So the interesting thing to me, and this solidified, I'm never going here. Um, <laughs> the average temperature during the growing season, which is the warmest season, is 60 degrees. Oh. I'm out. Oh. I'm out. <laughs> Not interested. <laughs> Not at all. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> No, I'm out. I'm out at that point. So, um, <laughs> so, um, so you remember me saying, and we've really seen them come up in the last 30 years is, um, we're seeing more and more Canadian wine outside of just ice wine. Right. So, um, the reason that they really started to focus on their grape quality and their wine quality is because of the North American Free Trade Act that went into effect in the 1990s. And in preparation for a flood of California import wine, they really had to start planting more grapes so that they could sustain themselves against what was coming going to be coming in from the United States. So that's why we're starting to see a lot higher quality. And I, I look forward to hearing what y'all think about this wine. I thought it was really fabulous. So... Yeah. Um, oh, I did forget to say in Ontario, there are 12 sub appellations. So of all the regions, Ontario has the most um, wine laws, so to speak. Um, and they're relatively strict on it, much as Canadians can be strict. So, all right. So this time we're going to go around. We're going to start with Jack. Oh, Jack. Oh, man. I was just Pressure's to, on. I'm not getting much out of the nose there. Right? Yeah, it's a very shy wine. Yeah, I was before. I, 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 I was maybe a little mossy or something. And then, yeah. then on the finish, maybe pomegranate is, is kind of almost a bitter fruit type of thing. But yeah, yeah, I like the pomegranate call. I put that in my notes. 
Mm-hmm. My wife tag. Yes, I did. I thought it was horrible. See? <laughs> I'm not. Do you want to read my notes? All right. Well, that's about it. I, I All right. don't get much All right. more. Are, so are you a Pinot Noir drinker? Do you typically like Pinot Noir? Used to used to be. Well, not so I'm much anymore. Yeah. Oh, okay. Have you ever watched, well, it was Bottle Shot, but it was the other side. Oh, Sideways. Well, I do. I'll take it. You're like, I'll take all the Merlot. All right. I'm a Merlot guy. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Beth? So, again, and I'm not a super taster, definitely not, but I would not have guessed it to be a Pinot Noir. Um, because what I like about Pinot Noir is that it's not tannic and I'm getting a lot of, I'm getting a lot of tannin. Yeah. So, so and it's a 19, so four years old, I'm surprised. So, but, um, and what I what I like about Pinot Noir is more red, you know, because red fruit forward. Mm-hmm. So I don't get fruit. I don't get like fruit. Yeah. So I work like that, Pinot you know, Noir, right? Yeah. But more of, for me, like almost dried, um, like dried herbs type. Yes. Of, yes. And, uh, but I, it's not that I don't like it. I wouldn't have said it was a pure wine. Right. Right. So I, I definitely got more of the herb first, right? Yeah. That like, it was not fruit driven. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, yeah, spot on. Yeah. Rick. All right. When you, you mentioned the notes, yeah, I know, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, just ask about the place. Does that mean my place? Yeah. 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 I watched what she writes. I write that the same thing. All right. So when I first smelled it, I actually, I actually thought I got a lot. Yeah. Right out the start, I was, I was pretty excited. What'd you get out the start? I got a lot of like dried cherries, jam, okay. and then like, I took like, swirled really hard, took a huge deep breath, and got like a really sweet candy flavor. I was like, what is that? And I, the best I could do is cherry Jolly Rancher, which is kind of a gross thing that they go like the, to smell, like it's hard to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not mad at it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then like on the, on like the face, I really struggled to, to kind of mm-hmm. sort it out. So. Got some leathery type type feel to it, but also like we walked through this market in Athens and like the like where they have like a lot of dried spices out front, and it's not it's tough to tough to describe like what is that smell, but it's like dried shit. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they grow a lot. It's a lot of oregano. Yeah. It's natural. Like we live in the series. I thought it was about yeah. the meat market. But in a good way. She's like, no, it was bad. It's so bad with the spice side. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Um, current kind of vibe, and then I did think it was chalky but buttery at the same time. I don't know if that's so the buttery is probably the malolactic, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, that's kind of all I could all I could get out of it. I guess yeah. I also didn't peg it for a Pinot Noir, yeah. I consider them, I don't know why, I might be really far out, but I consider them like the easy drinking, red. yeah, mm-hmm. um, definitely. And this one, this was. Good, but there's a lot that I need to unpack. I haven't like gotten yeah. there yet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like it. When? Yeah, so this is definitely not like the like the Santa Barbara, you know. No, it's, more it's not like rich the, and concentrated. It's not yeah. Lemon. Um, but I'm getting some cranberry. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Cranberry with the pomegranate. Yeah. yeah. Um, definitely some red fruit. There is some like. Strawberry undertones, um, but it's definitely more, I think, more dominated by that, that herbal, mm-hmm. earthy, earthy notes. So, like, that's why I'm thinking more like the Lamets. Uh, yeah. Sonoma Coast type place, like the warmer climate. You know? Yeah, it's definitely so a cool climate. Definitely yeah. Cool climate, you know? um, yeah. Maybe even kind of like Central Ohio. Oh, yeah, I like that call. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, but I didn't even think about that. But from Canada? <laughs> yeah. And I've always not always been a Pinot fan, yeah. But this is the kind of Pinot I do like, something that's got a little more earth and cut to it. 
Um, it's um, I had I had smoke herb, um, the cherry, blackberry. Um, I, I got um, on the, when I tasted that, I got the wood cherry pomegranate, and then I got a cherry tobacco, and I think that was part of the nose and part of the taste. But my dad used to be a pipe smoker, mm -hmm. and he I would go when I would visit him, I would smell the little ziplocs and all these different kinds. Yeah, and that's once I got to that. Yeah, stuck there. So then, like I said, she's a creamer. I was like, yeah, that would have got that too. But I'm so stuck on the the, the sweet cherry tobacco smell. Yeah, so yeah, earthy tobacco. But we'll have the fruit now. Yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah pretty much yeah. the same thing. Just I got mm -hmm. like like sour cranberry one. Oh yeah, like tart. tart. Yeah, yeah. Sour under ripe. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. It just has the bark. Yeah. yeah. I'm so glad there's two people between me and my wife because I'm going to disagree with you. <laughs> 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 yeah, this doesn't remind me all the land. This is not just like underbrush and long thing like that. Like the foresty note, it has the, the herbalness, but it's a different, it's, it's, it's different to me. It's not like underbrush. It's like more like that. It's more herbal. And so it's like more green, which is like a term for like French herbs. <laughs> so, no, but I, I, I do think that the. Well, I, yeah, I do think that the the development of the fruit is very reminiscent. Like Central Otago could be there, um, but it also has that kind of like, like I got like a like a red bell pepper, like an under ripe red bell pepper. Like you just smell the outside, you don't cut it open or anything. You just kind of took a sniff of it. Like that's something I get a lot from Finger Lakes, which makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, but I mean, for me, it's not. It's kind of unique in its own way. So there's not a lot of like it doesn't. I don't put it in the camp of like. It's not like Burgundy, it's not like California or Willamette, it's yeah. kind of its own thing. Yeah, I feel like there's aspects of it you can tie to some of those yeah. more familiar regions. Like, I get this similar to this place, and I get this similar to this place, but when you're looking at the whole tapestry of the wine, yeah. it's 100% its, its own sense of place. Like, I yeah. If I was, you know, I like wine tasting, and uh, I would have blind this wine, I would be like, I don't know where this is from, this is from some other place. Yeah. It's not on the normal list. Right. This is not testable. <laughs> this would be a good one for a tasting group. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mick, what do you think? Yeah. I'm a Pinot Noir fan. Great. Uh, this is absolutely amazing. But yeah, I was on the nose. I was, I was struggling to get anything for a while. Yeah. And then finally, I, like, I, I stepped away. Like, I, I didn't breathe as, as deeply in there. I was able to get so much. I was able to get, like, Strawberry or raspberry jam with mm -hmm. like a little bit of leather and maybe like a woodsy undertone. So if you open up a can of strawberry jam in, in the backwoods, like yeah, <laughs> in a log <laughs> cabin. Yeah, that, that's what it reminded me of. And, and then on the face, I was getting like this, this very bright cherry, fresh cherry with the uh, they like fresh cherries like with a little bit of smoke on it. Like, yeah, it does have a little bit of smokiness to it. So, which that smokiness makes me wonder if it's maybe sometime in a toasted barrel. It definitely doesn't taste oaky, but yeah. like, I don't know. And yeah. Smoke on my nose. Yeah. 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 I like that. Good. Amy? So, I first thought red fruit. I was like, okay, it's red fruit. Red alcohol. Mm -hmm. I was like, it. I thought it got darker. Yeah. And maybe that's the, the dry herbs, the smoky or something that I wasn't pulling out. I was just like, okay, I don't know that I get red fruit now. I get something else. Wow. That is basically impressive. And I didn't break <laughs> anything. Last <laughs> round. <laughs> I know. Well, it spilled a little bit up here. But it's all on towels. It's all on towels. Okay, go ahead, Amy. I apologize. Yeah, I just I couldn't quite place. I think I need to eat more things. I get that. Eat and smell and taste. I don't know what black tastes like. I'm like, okay, I'm going grocery shopping. I need black currant and I need blueberry. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know yeah. what it was tasting. Like. Yeah. It's just black currant tea and taste. And that's mm. kind of where I got what I used. You're no. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like all the sweetener. It was just darker. It tasted darker than it smelled. Yeah. That's the best I can yeah. do. Yeah. So, my recommendation, what we did in our Sunday tasting group some, some days when I was preparing for my exam, is it's hard to find those specific things, right? Mm -hmm. The lingonberries. But you can usually find like the jams in the international aisle. 
And so I would bring those to tasting group and we would smell them and taste them and do things. Yeah. 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 That's how nerdy we are. We have tasting groups. <laughs> yeah. That's what we do for fun. <laughs> we all did it at the same time. All right. Ellie, what do you think? Um, I, I got <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ellie, what'd you get? Um, right off the bat, I got violets and like cured meats. Okay. Um, it was like almost like a little pepper and cured meat thing behind it. Yeah. So that's um, those kind of herbs and stuff yeah, that are in yeah, it. I think so. Um, very like a definitely like stony kind of minerality for me, and like irony almost, and um, like the pomegranate cranberry family. Yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, I love, love it. Love it. Yeah, it's fun, right? Yeah. And because it's Canadian, it's got a pretty decent price point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. A. A. <laughs> All right. Now we are going to Bulgaria. Yay. All right. So. Just picture like you have like a like a like, hey, like, but it's been digested by a cow. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a blend. This is 56% Merlot, 24% Syrah, 14 Petit Verdot, and 6 Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, so I actually had not tasted this wine yet. Um, I missed the tasting with the vendor. So Kira tasted it for me. So I didn't taste it until 8 o'clock this morning. <laughs> After my class. I feel like my mind like, is awesome. a lot of bed. I feel like Take I have a shower and the sun isn't quite over the yard. Well, I feel like you get your most honest opinion at 8 a.m., right? So you're not drinking it. You're just tasting it, writing down what you smell. Did you taste. bring it first or after? Um, well, I had coffee. Oh, no. I had coffee. I was up at 5, so. Over Sophia, mm -hmm. and then up into Romania. Was up at five, laid in bed till 5.45, and then got out. All right. So, Bulgaria is, has actually two different climates, interestingly enough. It has a maritime climate and a continental climate. Um, which is kind of, I mean, not super unusual, but you don't see it quite as often. So there's two major wine regions. Um, here, as far as the wine laws go, it's just based on where the grapes are grown. So this one happens to be from the Thracian Valley um, in Ontario, or Ontario, in Bulgaria. So it's the southern. Um, we're more uh, maritime climate here, so a little more moderate, a little cooler and then, or warmer, and then up here, the Danube Plain, it's higher elevation and more continental climate. So. Could you repeat the percentages of the grapes again? Yeah, absolutely. Well, were you gonna write them down? Nope, okay. I'm just gonna oh. listen to you say that. 56% Merlot, 24% Syrah, 14 Petit Verdot, 6% Cabernet Sauvignon, um, I do actually have good winemaking notes on this. Let me run through that real quick. Five day cold maceration, so that below temperature, and then uh, 10 days fermentation, eight days continued maceration, and then all in concrete, and then 10 to 12 months in second and third use French oak. 30% in second use and 70% in third use. And I'm happy to repeat all that for those of you taking really good notes. <laughs> yeah. So there's um, the interesting thing about this region is their soils are very, very similar to that of Saint Emilion in Bordeaux. So they have a lot of limestone and clay there. And um, I'm going to read this guy's name because I'm going to mess it up. Um, oh, shoot. Did I not put it on here? I didn't. It's on my other notes. I'll look at it in a minute. It is. It is. So I'm sorry. Everyone will get a pass on that one. So um, it was like the Baron. Uh, he had to do with Lafitte Rothschild. It's going to draw. Oh, Baron Edmund, um, part of the Rothschilds. Um, he actually came down in the 1890s and 
bought property in Bulgaria and started growing wine there. So there are actually, um, Shandong actually has properties there as well. Um, so because those soils are so similar to what we see um, up there in France. I wonder if that wasn't part of the Habsburg home, um, you know, region. You probably yeah. know that. The yeah, I, did they not have, oh, the Austrian, Germany, wouldn't have yeah. or, would they not have had some of that area? Hence, the Rothschilds coming over, you know, uh, that all, yeah. That, that area yeah, it was all part of the Ottoman Empire at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Ottoman was, Habsburg was opposed to yeah. Ottoman. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 I listened to, I, I listened to. No, they were concurrent. Concurrent, because it was World War I. It was the whole, da, 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 da. Okay, got it. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I love this discussion. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I know. No, no, it's good. We're, history. Yes. Yes. So. <laughs> Up until the 70s and 80s, um, Bulgaria was actually really, really well known for high quality, great value wine. The reason for that is because it was a communist country at the time. And so all of the property um, after World War II uh, became state run co-ops. Um, and everything was combined and controlled by the communist government. Um, so in 1989, when the Iron Curtain fell, um, all the properties had to revert back to whoever the owner was prior to World War II. Obviously, that took some time to find the people who they belonged to. During this time, um, a lot of the vineyards fell into disrepair, Quality went down. Once it, they fully reverted back to the previous owners, um, a lot of the plots were so small, it didn't make sense for them to continue making wine, uh, especially because they had to repair a lot of the vineyards and it would take time and money. Um, and obviously they weren't doing well, right, um, at the time. And so it took a lot of years for it to kind of come back um, to its former glory. And we're still just starting to see that. So. In 2007, when uh, Bulgaria decided to join the EU, there was this big ramp up and they got all these subsidies coming in from the EU and a lot of it went towards their wine program. So they started getting this flood of money coming in to repair the vineyards, to educate the winemakers, to educate you know, on viticulture and viniculture. And so we're just starting to see the effects from 2007 of really dialing in their winemaking again and we're starting to get the higher quality with the lower price point that the 70s and 80s saw so that's really um, exciting also the interesting thing with that you know we're talking about the the wine laws and there's basically just the two when they were preparing to join the eu because the eu is all about you have to have all your appellations right they made up 52 appellations mm -hmm. There are legally 52 appellations. You will hardly ever see them actually used on a bottle in Bulgaria. What's the average appellation size? Uh, I like. I like, don't even know that they like, know. I feel like right. it's got to be quite small. You're like, yeah. These three big ones, and then the rest yeah. are like single digits. Yeah. 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 They didn't really say anything about about the sizes, um, but I mean, they can't. I mean, you think about they can't be very big it's a small country and to have yeah. 52 that's a lot yeah so I imagine they're not very big and like I said they don't even actually use them like you will hardly ever see them on a label so the big thing to know is that there is the difference in the climates right so we have the continental versus uh, the maritime so you're going to get different grape varieties based on that so and then, um, you know, the soil type obviously is great for growing grapes. So this is a Bordeaux style red blend um, from Petite Inira um, in the specifically Bessa Valley, which is one of the 52 Appalachians. But this domain is actually called Bessa Valley. It's one of the oldest ones in the region. So what do we think about this wine? And for those of you that are well versed in Bordeaux, um, how does it compare for you? So let's start in the middle this time. Gwen. I wouldn't say it's the same as Bordeaux. No. 
definitely not. Definitely um, not the same. No. Um, right. Sort of blend. Yes. But like. Right. Getting like a little bit more fruit, I think. I, well, no, no, I wouldn't say a little fruit, though. That's not taking less fruit, right? Mm -hmm. Less fruit than, than a widow. Again, some like leather. Um, let's throw it in. Do you like it? Um, it needs to mellow out a little bit. Yeah, so what? This is a 2018. Yeah, it's still too, still too, too tight, I think. Too tight, yeah. yeah. What do you mean too tight? I'm sorry. So it's like everything is, in my opinion, um, and I actually don't like to give my opinions, but since you asked, um, I don't like to give my opinions till the end, is um, like everything's still kind of disjointed, right? The chocolate's popping out, the fruit's popping out, the tannins are there, but it's not woven together quite as seamlessly as I would want it to be. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. You don't sound convinced. That sounds, that sounds more loose. Than tight, but, yeah. <laughs> well, I think if it was loose, then they'd all be more like melted more together. Here's a good one. I, I warned you there are wrong. No, I have the I have the I have a great analogy. Sure. Is sure. instead so it's like you put all the ingredients for a smoothie in, but before you smooth it, that's what this is, right? Before you blend it. And so it's it's each thing is tight still, right? After it's blended, everything's kind of loose and all together. Oh, yeah, like if you drink an old fashioned where they bring it out, it's like 15 minutes, it's like, it's that's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They're all there. Yeah. All right. I want to go have an old fashioned. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Glass lot's a good place. Lori, what do you think of this wine? I like it. I agree with a lot of what Lynn said, um, but I had smoke or leather plum. Um, but then, and then I had cocoa, and then I had vanilla, and I thought, wait a second, maybe it's the you know, lip balm. That's <laughs> right. so I'm not sure what the vanilla. I forgot to go back, but I well, had cocoa. It <laughs> does have French oak, so vanilla okay. tracks. All right, so yeah, so yeah. I thought, hmm, maybe it's that. <laughs> but, but ask me again next year after we come back for Bordeaux Cruise. So that's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much everything other than uh, like black pepper and white pepper. Those, yeah. Those yeah. 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 I like and, that. And the blackberry, the, the dark plums, you know, like that. Right. Yeah. Cool. So I think when I compare it to like a Bordeaux, the, the, the fruit is brighter. Like I feel like Bordeaux does a really good job of integrating everything. Yeah. And this wine is just less integrated when it comes to the flavors, right? So for me, that's the only thing that up. I think this is a great wine that's going to be you know, approachable to a lot of a wide audience, and I think it would do well with a little age on it. So I think it'd be kind of cool to, like you said, age it out yeah. and see what it's like in a couple of years if you have patients. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it's already, what, six, yeah, six years five, old. six years old? Yeah, but so, Bordeaux is yeah. 20 years old. Yeah. And so yeah. I think it, when you compare it to Bordeaux, this is doing this well in six years. It's a testament to the fact that, that the region has the ability to age, and that's kind of cool. That means that the winemakers are doing the right things to keep the balance, and that, you know, that the wine's going to have that longevity. There's a, a lot of wines. If it's got the tannins, right? I mean, it's all Syrah. I would say it's Syrah. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. I would say it's balance more than anything else. You have the balance yeah. of the, you have the fruit power with the balance of yeah. the tannins and acidity. All those combined can help you with each wine. If something's out of balance, yeah. then it kind of shows really quickly after some time. And the fact that this is this old and it's doing well, I think it's a good wine. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a very, very oh, high yeah. quality yeah. wine. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Mick? Oh, I was going to say, I enjoy this wine so much, I forgot to figure out what I, <laughs> what I was thinking. So, you um, just. I was, I was like, I had like two sips left. I was like, oh crap, I need to figure out what I want to say about this. Well, we can <laughs> always pour more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, no, I, was, I mean, I, I was getting some volume uh, on the nose, but yeah, it's it just so delicious to me. And you were, you were talking about tight versus loose. I like the, the tight wines, the, the ones that don't really blend in well together. Just kind of smacking you around. Yeah, that, those are my, my type of wines. And, this yeah. this spoke to me really well. Nice. So. 
So I look forward to seeing what you think about the next wine. <laughs> <laughs> if he wants to get punched in the face by the wine instructor. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Huh? So speaking of, there's no wrong answer. This was my fate. My when I first smelled it, I was like, this is very fruity, like fruit roll up almost. Like it was maybe it was just overpowering. And I I wrote down fruit roll up, and I'm like, I don't know that I ever actually. It's like more like the dried <laughs> fruit, but kind yeah, of. But yeah. I don't know that it tastes that way. Yeah. But it, I had more fruit on this and lower tannins than the last one. I don't know if it is. To me, it seems. Um, I, I think like they're the silkier. Okay. Like the texturally, they're, the tannins are a little different than the last okay. one. Maybe that's what it is. So I, yeah. I enjoyed this one more than the last one. I'm not a fan of tannic wines. Mm -hmm. um, so lower tannins is preferred. But yeah, I like the fruit roll up. Yeah. Yeah. I like the fruit roll up call. Okay. Ellie? The only thing I wrote down was hot. Like alcohol? Yeah. Like it was just like I can't get past it. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's, what do we think the alcohol is on this one? And I just yeah. said I don't know. I don't know what it is, but that's the way it comes. On the nose? 14, or, or 14 5. Yeah. But oh, don't believe no. the label. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's part of the <laughs> Yeah. 14, yeah, 14, 14 5. Yeah. 14, 5. Yeah. Yeah. So again, yeah. it's like, is it? It's like a, a percent point and a half. Percent. Yeah. Yeah. Or percent and a half. My side, like I'm the opposite. My side was like the last one. Mm -hmm. Way too much. Yeah. Did you try it with food? <laughs> yeah. And it, it's yeah, still, it's, yeah. 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 It's not like All right. <laughs> well, maybe this one would be better for you, like decanted, Possibly. like some more yeah. to kind of let that alcohol blow off yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Probably. yeah. Jack? Yeah. I don't have a very good smell, for, especially considering the size of the nose I have. But I, I had the same thing. I smelled, I thought alcohol yeah. kind of. Forestry floor, but but on the and this again on the finish, I, I got what I call black cherry. It's probably mm -hmm. uh, current and leather. And yeah. Hay kind of yes. All together. So maybe that's what you're talking about. Yeah. But I like the I like this one. I yeah. Like your Merlot. Yeah, it's got your Merlot yeah. in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the dominant gray. Yeah. 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 Well. Beth, what do you think? So my I was surprised. So I I like this wine. And um, I, I thought that the first, um, my first sip was so much less tannic than the following sip, which now I'm like, okay, I got that. Right. My tongue is sticking on the roof of my mouth. Right. But you know, I really liked that. But I like this better than that last one. Yeah. Um, I think I, I'm not a huge Syrah Shiraz fan, so I'm, I'm going to blame it on the Syrah for, for the tannin. But um, the only Bulgarian wine that I've had and that I liked was at, I bought at Costco and it didn't say Bulgaria on it. I bought it because it was, I was buying it for a friend when I saw it was said hard day Cabernet and <laughs> no, it had that dog, yeah. full dog. You know, I always tell people, oh, you buy one because it's a cute label. I did it. There, there was a time and a place. For and you did it. Label. And it was <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> and it was fabulous. And I was at my other um, Taylor sister's. Um, but, uh, so we were down near Arlington, and it was that Costco. But Costco doesn't. Every Costco doesn't sell the same wine, <laughs> right? right? So um, I could never find that again. But when I researched that wine, because it didn't say it, it was Bulgarian. I was like, okay. Oh my God, yeah. Bulgarian makes That's wine. That's funny. It so didn't say it. On there. It didn't say it. Yeah, but, weird. yeah. But they didn't mind selling at Costco. So. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> Rick. I was I was right with Nick. Like I totally forgot to write down anything because it was like I just was enjoying it. it. I, yeah. I really enjoyed it. So like I that's fine. You don't have to write down anything. Right, right, right. Yeah. But like I but didn't even put any effort into it. <laughs> <laughs> no more wine for you. But then when you <laughs> said, I get, I, I get extra on it. He gets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll have another. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when you said fruit roll up. I like because I had like fruit and molasses and like those really well developed type like smell type things, but like fruit leather and maybe my mom was uh, too cheap to let us get uh, uh, fruit roll ups, so she would make fruit leathers on like the, the hydrator. Oh, no. um, 
Yeah, and well, oh, I when you're a kid, as far as when you're a kid, when you're a kid, though, you want what your friends have, but like that developed because, like, it's, yeah. it's a yeah. deeper flavor. Yeah. And I, I get that same thing, mm -hmm. gravel pepper, and then maybe it's just like seeing the, the pepper salami, like, the, yeah. like just like it's mm -hmm. inseparable to my head, very suggestible. So, <laughs> <laughs> But you still have wine to figure it out. That's yeah, yeah, so there's more time. Yeah. More time. I'll pause myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Taylor. Um, I was like, I I felt uh, I a couple of other people. I think my dad came like leather, and then meat. I didn't really. I didn't specify, but it's like just kind of meaty, heavy. Um, shoe polish, but in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> and then licorice on the finish like it had to sit for a while and he didn't take another drink then i had like licorice going across and that was really lovely and it was just super heavy and inky feeling to me and i love that one it was great great so i'm into shoe polish leather shoes. <laughs> it's amazing what you find out you're into oh, right I like that. yeah Fun. well i'm glad y'all like that wine so now we are going to India. India. Yes, and this wow. wine is Cabernet Sauvignon and Shiraz. I want to say 8020, uh, but I will double check that when I'm done pouring. Where's the wine regions? So the wine wow. regions are Maharashtra. I looked this up so many times. Maharashtra. I'm not good. Thank you. And um, can you want to say the Kamataka? Um, so we are in the Maharashtika. Yeah, I listened to it. You know, you do that thing where it like you, it says it. I did that so many times. It's just not going to stick, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some things I just can't learn. How do you say it in Texas? Uh. Mush. <laughs> so the interesting thing about this wine, though, is um, we are drinking like the flagship wine for India. Like um, Grover, Kunwal Grover is the name of the, um, well, the not the winemaker right now, but he's the owner. He started this vineyard in the 1970s. He um, produced his first bottle, like vintage, that he sold in the 1980s. Um, he is the one that brought wine back to India. So Phylloxera, um, India actually had a, a pretty big wine um, industry up until Phylloxera in 1853. So Phylloxera, for those of you that um, aren't familiar, is a louse that wiped out 70% of the world's grapes in 1853 into the early 1900s. Um, and so they got wiped out in India as well. And then after that, because it is a um, very religious Buddhist culture, um, a lot of the states actually don't allow alcohol sales still today. So um, because it with the, so much government disapproval, there were really no wines being made here. Um, on top of the fact that it is hot and humid and tropical, right? You're not typically growing grapes in a region that has a tropical climate, and they are here. Um, the reason why they are is in the 1980s, the growing middle class started to get really interested in like luxury type items, um, like going out to eat and having wine and these kinds of things. And so they really started to push for that. There is um, 150% tax on any wine imported into India. Imported. Imported into India. So 90% of their 24 million bottles of wine that they produce each year, 90% um, is kept in the country because it's so hard to get wine from anywhere else there. So they only export 10%. Most of it goes to the UK, uh, to America, and to France. The Most of the 10%. The name of the person... Grover? Grover. Conwall Grover. So, so he's, he must have been a British then. A uh, British Indian. Uh, it, you know, it didn't really say. Because that's not Indian. So. That's, that's what I'm just saying. Right. I mean, yeah. they've, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, they they were under, you know, so, right, for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So this is their, they have lots of different labels. Um, and he does actually have a really uh, well-known French winemaker that he works with, Michelle okay. Roland. 
um, is the winemaker. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So they they all live there. It's it's the property. Yeah. So it's a family run. So we're in Maharashtra. 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 Can't do it. Yeah, can do it. There's not a lot of altitude. No, I mean it's it's pretty flat. It's um, very tropical. It's really really hard to grow grapes. Again, just like in Uruguay, because it is so hot and humid, it is not ideal for organic farming. Um, so there is a lot of, or not a lot, but they do have to use pesticides and herbicides and things like that to to get the grapes to grow. And they're doing a lot of the same things that Uruguay's doing, like planting on different trellis styles to allow that air to move through. Um, they do a lot of pergola style as well, very similar to what they do in Galicia with the um, the Albarino grapes and Rias Faecias, where they're doing them on a pergola and they just kind of pick them um, overhead like that. So just to allow all that drying kind of aspect. So yeah, oh, I was gonna tell you all the percentage of the grapes on this one. I think this one said on it too. It's like, I feel like it's like, oh, oh here it is, 80 and 20. I think that's what I said. Yeah. So it's aged for six months in new French oak. So um, not long, but enough. Um, yeah. What do we think? Like this wine to me, again, this is another one uh, that I didn't get to taste till eight o'clock this morning. So. Um, so I was I excited. <laughs> well, I had already oh, tasted God. like the three whites and the other two Ooh. reds. And... This, is a bit, this is a lot. This is a bit much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm actually curious to see what it tastes like. See if I get the same. Because at first I was like, I don't want to say what I was like, but I was like, what? All right. So. Vince, we're going to start with you this time. Okay. Can I read what I thought of the 2012 vintage that I had? So he's cheating. Oh, you, he are you comparing? You no, know, I didn't realize. I, I, this is one that I've actually had before. So I had one in 2017. And I read, uh, smells like old damp fermenting hay. <laughs> Wine starts with an almost brief flint rock and tobacco flavor, briefly transition to saline, blue sugar wine, and black root smoke and oak. And, you know, I think that's still accurate for this wine. It's like, it's got pipe tobacco, smoke, mm -hmm. mushroom, pencil shavings. There's a lot of wet leaves and mulch, which I think is interesting, but it still has that black fruit. And like, yeah. that, there's yeah. definitely something there to it. So. I'm going to try it with this peppered salami. I feel like that's going to pair well. I write my notes on a on app when I can go back and refer to them, but, I mean, I, I thought it was cool to have this wine a second time, and, and the notes carry through. And the notes carry through. Same conclusion. Yeah. Oh, that's a fun pairing. Y'all need to try it with peppered salami. Y'all want to try it with peppered salami? Does anyone not eat? I'll try it. Oh, that's much better. Oh, wait. So much better. I am not impressed. Yeah, I, I guess it's like this. Cheap. With the salami, mm -hmm. it's like I would need to eat a lot of salami. Like, like I would need to eat a lot of salami. It's so delicious. So. Of all the wines, I feel like this one is the most, probably the most polarizing. Because it's a little funky. The tannins are a little grippier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like this the best by far. This is my favorite of all the wines. Mm -hmm. Really? He loves big. You're walking he loves home, big. Yeah. You're walking He's home. a beat on the chest guy. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm the same boat as you are. This is yeah. Yeah. my favorite so far. You're yeah. a beat on your chest guy. Never have beat on my chest. Yeah, with the pepper salami is <laughs> fun. No, no, I'm not saying you beat on your chest. I'm saying the wine beats on your chest. Maybe. It's like, it's like oh soldiers walking across. Like that that one? Dude, that's that why he's done it. I don't know. Yeah. Isn't that what you're it is. need more. I've had some. You want to try it with the? Did you try it with the wine? Yeah, you go ahead. Oh, I already did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What do y'all think about it with the salami? Yeah. Yeah. This. This is a New York strip steak cigar smoking wine. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think. Let me see what I put on my note for the food. I'm not a smoker, but. Did you? So I said braised short ribs. Yeah. 
Oh, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah. something. Big red meat. Yeah, leather, sweet tobacco, perfectly ripe blackberries, currants with just a hint of barnyard that takes me home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 so it, it takes the it takes it it totally Yeah. Right. Look at yeah. That. Wow. I would need yeah. to eat a lot of salami. Yeah. Yeah. I would need to have a very yeah. 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 Some short ribs. Need some short ribs. Right. Be fine. I almost All right. I like. I like it better without the salami. Or because yeah, you I think I like it really better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you yeah. So you very... really like this one, Jack? <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah. I yeah. like wine. I mean, I'm not a cook. Yeah. I'm not sure why. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like the fruitiness of it. I yeah. like that leathery, tobacco yeah. whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I like the taste. Um, I still can't smell really good. Taylor, how'd the salami work out for you? It was definitely much better. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still not totally different taste. Still, still not for you though. No, you know, I just want to be very hard for me. Like I could do a couple of things. I'm not gonna try it, but it might be good. When I smelled it, it smelled like cheese, like she does. Like that funky. Yeah. Yeah. She does. That's what they say. Yeah. Yeah. Look at it. I think the hard part is doing it. Yeah. 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 Y
Cabernet Sauvignon, and it will give you a list of great things to pair with it. Or you can look up, I'm having beef short ribs, and it will give you a thing to pair. And it's not just wine. It's coffee, beers, cocktails. Um, some like even talks about like sodas and stuff in, in some of them. Yeah, it's not just wine. Um, you can get on Amazon for like 25 bucks. And that's been um, kind of a game changer for me, especially I was making um, a tikka masala the other night. And I was like, what am I going to pair with that? Yes. <laughs> 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 well, uh, technically, I don't think you guys this with everything. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, right. but I think like, if you can think yeah, about it, though, like, when, you, when you have Indian food, like the like spice. The Indian wine, wine, yeah. Like, like that, this makes a lot more sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I could actually see that working. Um, I think because it's yep. chicken, though, might not. But like if I did a tikka masala much. with pork or something, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's it's interesting, spice, though. Yeah. All right. Oh, I'll come around to you. Oh, okay. Stay there. Yeah. Yep. Anyone who wants to pour, I'll come to you. Or dump. Close. Yeah. Weren't a fan, my pillar. Do it? It was not my favorite. Yeah. I mean, like. I mean, they say where you know. Um. Goes goes with what grows together goes together. Yeah. Man, where are my words tonight? I haven't even been drinking. Well, I wasn't drinking. I think about like the region and where it's from. Same with like cocktails, making cocktails. Like, where where is it? Right? And I, I mean, like Indian food also like is so very regionally specific. Yeah, right. Like the different spices that are used in one town versus another will be very drastically different. All right. Like, like, really strong spice in for this next wine, I'm actually going to give everyone a slight rinse because we're going back to a white wine. So for that, what you're going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of white wine in your glass. Not the one we're pouring because you're all going to want seconds on it. <laughs> and you're just going to kind of twirl it, kind of get all of it out. And you, I'll either come around with a dump bucket and you can dump it or you can drink it. It's fine whatever you decide to do yeah. i think we all know what the airedale's gonna do right <laughs> thank you you're welcome that, that nice. i don't mind birthday i'm sorry i think they're fine the guys that say that i know how to flip a glass you watched me do it up there no it, remember when michael and rick yeah Mixture one. Yeah. I'm like, so sad. Yes. I'm like, 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 all right so we are moving on to lebanon did y'all come up with this one in the car no we did not we, we thought of Israel, so Lebanon. Yeah. Israel, yeah. All right. So, again, just like the last one, Chateau Moussar is, I mean, it is basically the flagship wine for Lebanon. They put Lebanese wine on the map. Um, they are um, French. The family's French. They've been there for, for generations. Um, they are in the, so their winery is actually just outside of Beirut, but their vineyards are in the Baca Valley. So the Baca Valley is situated between the, um, Hezbollah and Hamas. Right? <laughs> between, no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Forget the <laughs> between Mount Lebanon and what is called the anti Lebanon mountains. Oh my gosh. Yes. Mm. It's actually a thing. Um, and so it's in this valley, and because of this, they get tons of snow melt, so they don't need lots of irrigation. Uh, they get plenty of water, plenty of sunshine. You know, it's warm there. Um, so the interesting thing, you know, I feel like we all know that Lebanon has been war-torn for 
decades, pretty much. Um, and <laughs> during the 15-year Civil War, um, Chateau Moussard and several other winemakers, not just them, continued to make wine. They never stopped. Um, so one of the things they had to do, because their vineyards are over in the Bacaw Valley, there. Um, but their winery is over near Beirut, is they actually, um, Serge, which was the father, actually would take the wines, put them on a boat, and take them over. It would take six days for the wines, the grapes. It would take six days for the grapes to reach the winery. So here's what makes Chateau Moussard so unique, is because it takes so long for the wines to reach the winery, is fermentation starts naturally, right? So once they're in those, the, the tubs or the tanks or whatever they're shipping them in, the fermentation process already starts. Uh, they don't really understand the science of this still, um, but because they think, because the fermentation has already started, therefore oxidation has already started, these wines can age for years. Like you could open a one from the 1950s and it would taste just as fresh today. So these grapes aren't turning into raisins by the No, no. Like, right, the weight of, like, you pop, you have them piled in this thing, right? And the weight from these up here are crushing these down here. And then because of the sugars and the natural yeast that are on the grapes, the fermentation process starts. So because of that, and like, they actually have, like, a 120-day challenge. Um, Chateau Moussard claims, I, it tastes so delicious, I've never been able to keep one open that long, that you can open this wine and it will stay good for over 100 days after being open. Where most wine, like after three or four days, it's done, right? What gives it this color? So they, some of it is the great varieties. Some of it is the oxygen that is interacting with it. Um, they are also doing um, nine months in French oak. And then they age it for seven years after harvest before release. So this is a 2014. Wow. So some of it's age, some of it's oak, and some of it is the grape varieties. So the grape varieties are Obaday and Merois are the two grape varieties. They're and named they, and they Obaday like, and Merois. And they don't, pre and they don't um, uh, ferment it on the skin. <clears throat> No, no, there's no, um, I mean, other than the fermentation that's happening while it's being transported to yeah. the winery, but it's not, right, it's not it's a not, skin contact wine. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So this wine, um, we actually had Mark Hoshar, um, I actually have a picture of the family okay. here. Uh, we had Mark right here come, he was here, would have been April of 2022. Uh, we had an event. Yeah. You had to yeah. record the wine? Yeah, One he came. Ago. Yeah, yeah, it, it would have been like April. Yeah, it was chilly. Yeah. So he came and he poured his wines and um, talked to us about his family's journey. They actually have a great book um, if you're interested in learning more about them. Their website has a lot of information. Um, they're 100% family owned. Uh, Lebanon, you know, they've had so many wars and stuff. And there's actually a great documentary on Amazon Prime called Wine and War. Um, and it's all about uh, the Lebanese um, wine industry and how they've sustained through all the wars they've been through over the years. It's really, really interesting. Uh, they interview Serge um, Hochar. And they're recently, um, like recently in like, when that, that hospital was blown up in Lebanon, when was that? That was 2020? The yeah, there was a hospital that was blown up in Lebanon in like 2020, 2021. Oh, no. So in, 20, in 2021, they had an explosion in downtown of the port. They no, there was one at a hospital. There was a hospital in 84. No, this was, this was more recently. This, this like, I, I was listening to a podcast on it, and they were talking about it. Anyways. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, the, their sister, the, the Hoshar sister, died in, in that explosion. So, um, but yeah, so the, the, the grapes here, so their red wines um, are mostly French varieties. They use a lot of the Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Senso, uh, but they focus their white wines on native uh, Lebanese wines. 
Are you so, sure? in 2021, there was a there was a fertilizer story. Maybe they kept the saying the hospital in the podcast. Well, no, I, I, the, 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 the explosion was so large; it was larger than a nuclear explosion. So it, it might have that much fertilizer affected the downtown, a hospital in, in downtown. Yeah. Beirut. it actually blew up and damaged you? like. Yeah. A number of oh, buildings, right. including, yeah. including most of the hospitals got damaged because they were yeah. all facing seaward. Yeah, and it was just this tower, and you know, it was just it just oh, decimated downtown. Yeah, so that that might be it because they they just kept talking about this hospital, and I think it's because she was at that hospital at the time, and so yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She decimated downtown. Yeah, so there are. Um, Four regions. You have the North region. You have the Bacaw Valley, which is where most of the grapes are actually grown. There are wineries in some of the other regions and grapes as well. Um, you have the South region and then Mount Lebanon. Um, there are so up here, right? So we have Syria just over the border, and because the uh, cult, the countries are so small and there's a lot of crossover. There are several winemakers that are in Lebanon that also have vineyards in Syria. And since Syria has become uh, so volatile as well, uh, a lot of them have not been able to go see their vineyards in years. Wow. So they have the grapes literally wow. taxied in yeah. in a cooler and they taste them to determine whether or not they're ready to pick. And they call the people that are working in the vineyard like, okay, go ahead and pick. And so they're still keeping it going and they've thought about closing. Um, but because they're trying, you know, trying to keep their history and their tradition alive, um, they're really kind of focused on continuing to do that where I'm like, I feel like I would pull up steaks, but it's yeah. Also last year when we did a tasting, I'm looking through my notes, we did a 1992. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. I still have like three bottles so, yeah. of the 1992. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it, it was, was released two years prior to that, so it was released in 2020. Yeah, wow. they don't release their wines until they're ready. The same grapes. Same grapes. Yep, they mind about a third deal. Yeah, 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 no, they're all about... a lot of good reds, too. Uncorked 1992, or you drank it before? We, they no, Uncorked, yeah, yeah, yeah. we opened it that night. Wow. They opened yeah. Yeah. our glass wow. in there. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. I mean, it was so deep golden color. Oh, it was one of oh, like the was, caramel notes yeah. and the, oh, it was. And I had, I put said portobello mushroom, twisted almonds, dried apple, caramelized onions, and herbs. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I just, I'm going to go be alone with this wine. I'll, I'll be over here in the corner. Don't mind me. Yeah. Yeah. This, it's such a unique wine. Uh, does anyone want a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Jack? I'll have some, yeah. I'm not well, a white wine person. Wine. Wine. I, I this like is it. delicious, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know what it tastes like. I know what it smells right. like. I put canned pears. Ooh, yes. <laughs> yes. They remind me of canned pears and applesauce. Yep. Yes. Yes. Like yeah. pears yeah. and sauce. Yeah. Canned pears is spot on. Now, so, now say it as if Peter Brady were saying it. <laughs> Can pears and applesauce. Oh. oh my god. Or Tom's and applesauce. I love that you said that. How about you, Rick? I was going to say this is where you say it. That's your problem. Thank you. All right. What are we getting on the nose and the palate on this wine? Who wants to start? I just started. Yeah, you started. You did. Apricot. Honey. Honey. Like molasses or like maple syrup or it's definitely sweet. Smelling. Syrup's a good one. Yeah. 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 Ye
Wow, man, I don't know. I'm experimenting. The olives might be fun too, but yeah, I, take a piece of both and see which one works. See, Kira wrote the tag for this one. Let's see what she says. My daughter's the one who wrote Yeah. This is really good with olives. Try this. Oh, she didn't put any food notes on this one. Yeah, the food pairing's always fun. So now, if we ask those questions again at the beginning of the class, what would be the most unique one? This one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's definitely different. All right. Here, this is so cool. Yeah, it's amazing. It's not my favorite, but yeah, everything it's, about it, the oh, color, oh, absolutely. Yeah, the color. like I always say, right? So there's wines that are drinkers, not thinkers, and there's wines that are thinkers, not drinkers. This is a thinker. Oh, you end up drinking it so fast because you're like, what is that? And what am I getting? Yeah, yeah. I expected it to be sweet from the nose. Yeah, it smells. Yeah, it's that that caramel. Kind of oxidized. <laughs> I thought we had their book up there, but I don't see it. All right. So, favorite wine of the night? Chateau Massar. Amy? I'll show you the name. Um, Maybe that's your, I don't know. So, my ratings is either the Israeli or the Bulgarian. Okay. All right, Mick, favorite wine of the night? So a lot of the freeness um, is the number five. Mm. That one. The, the Indian. Indian. Indian All right. That's no, that sorry. Can see that. Brad? Yeah. Between the Pinot Noir and the... Oh, oh. Uh, you didn't like it. The Pinot. Wow. Yeah, and the huh. Indian wine. We should have yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Nice. <laughs> Lori, favorite wine? Like the, the, the Bulgarian so, Indian. Yeah. I think I like the Bulgarian wine. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Musar. Musar. Uh -huh. Musar. Taylor. Bulgarian. Bulgarian. So Rick. Um, I, I mean, I, I really enjoyed the Indian wine, but I think yeah. Bulgarian would be something. Okay. That I yeah. The olive drink. is definitely what I would. Eat. The Perry? Yeah, yeah, that's what the I was going to do. Yeah. I'm not trying to do it. Oh. Beth? Bulgarian. Bulgarian? Bulgarian? Oh, right. Indian. Indian. <laughs> <laughs> now i got to try it with the olive. Oh, yeah. The olive makes it out. What kind of olive? This is uh, the garlic. Like all that olive. Like all that I was not at the of that. You get an olive? We have more. We have more. Oh. Alright, who needs an olive? He's always splash on me. Oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah, the person's always oh, right. Olive? Right in the fountain is good. <laughs> Anyone else want to try it with an olive? Yeah. It's kind of fun. It kind of it has the caramel, yeah. Yeah. kind of yeah. sweet yeah. 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 Anyone else want to try it with an olive? Yeah. Yeah. I did, but I'll, I'll bring another olive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look at the picture in the house. Yeah. Buddy, you good? You want another one? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. We are right on time. I pride myself on being on time. Um, so that is the end. I'm happy to I'll fill up your waters um, and give anyone a top off of any wine that they would like to revisit.